All right, so we're going to get going. Um, again, this is Simon Volta, Regional Account Director here at V Technologies, and I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, so I'm joined here by Jake Chukowski, our Senior Account Executive on the V Technology side, and he's going to be kind of um, walking through kind of the workflow on the Starship uh, side with GP and Panatrack. I'm also here joined by Alex Rode from uh, Panatrack. Uh, one of their solution consultants who's going to uh, walk everyone through the Panatrack solution, kind of how it uh, walks through um, your packing element um, with um, GP. Um, so again, we're going to get started with a short presentation, and then we'll let uh, both Alex and Jake kind of walk you through the workflow uh, of how Panatrack and Starship work with your GP interface. <clears throat> So just a brief introduction to V Technologies, uh, who we are, if you're not familiar with us at all. Uh, well, we've been around since 1987. Um, we were founded um, by a, a family-run business, essentially. Um, Starship came to be around 1989, um, really developed um, the GP integration for about 20 plus years now, right? So back in the early 2000s is when we started in the Microsoft space, having our plug and play interface. Um, with uh, Microsoft Great Plains. Um, we have over about 40 employees in total at V Technologies. Um, most of them are housed here in Connecticut, uh, but we do have some remote employees as well, um, servicing and, and our support in sales uh, capacity. <clears throat> Take my to the next slide. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the main features here, um, about why someone would choose Starship and when you look at the shipping solution that we offer for the last 30 plus years. Um, so really one thing that we like to talk about is having a solution that's both on the on-prem or the cloud interface. Uh, most of our users uh, this day and age are choosing going a full true multi-tenant SaaS solution in our cloud environment. <laughs> for those of you who still wanna stay on-prem, um, we do have that available to you as well. Um, but obviously cloud has its uh, advantages being um, obviously, one of those, you know, having that run up in our Microsoft Azure environment, uh, not worrying about any sort of upgrades uh, that happen quarterly, um, and just having that, you know, flexibility of accessing it anywhere in the world, essentially. Um, also, being a multi-carrier uh, platform, uh, being able to do live rate shopping uh, between parcel and LTL um, carriers uh, that you're using today, having one place to go to to make those informed decisions. Uh, so that way you're, you know, you get the best rates possible for the shipment that you're processing in that uh, moment. Uh, reduce your shipping cost, right? Um, one of the advantages we give you on the parcel side is having discounted postage rates through our um, uh, discounts we offer through the post office. It's the only carrier that we will offer you discounts for. Um, one of the uh, ways you can control that is obviously kind of using different rules, um, selecting your cheapest options. Uh, and we can kind of have the switch rules that kind of come into play where it may switch it to your postage rates uh, being the cheapest option available for that particular shipping lane. Um, so again, we can get in more details on that as we go along. Um, and then ability to automate, you know, carrier selection, right? Um, as I mentioned earlier, having the ability to simplify your small package and LTL carriers, right, uh, in one place. And then kind of having kind of that mix and match. So some of our customers will take in, say, a parcel order from GP. Uh, but realize it's really better suited to go LTL and seeing those kind of side by side uh, gives that customer the informed uh, decision that they need uh, to maybe switch modes right on the fly and ship it in LTL mode or vice versa um, for yourselves. And then lastly, you know, really the delivery expectation, right? Kind of having the ability of, uh, you know, um, automating, you know, address validation on the front end, right? Making sure you're shipping to the right location. Um, to avoid those errors, but also using custom branded emails, right, uh, to kind of give folks the up-to-date information on their shipment, uh, when to expect delivery of that. It's very important this day and age to eliminate or minimize those calls you may get today uh, from customers asking where your packages are, your bill of lading, or your shipments for LTLR. So again, having that, um, you know, notification go out in real time, or maybe at the end of the day in a batch format, uh, is definitely very helpful, uh, especially with our licensing. <clears throat> this just gives you kind of an overview of the different carriers. We have about 25 different carrier applications we support in Starship today, uh, most of those being on the LTL front. We support all your major parcel carriers today, some up in Canada as well. 
Um, again, if you don't see a carrier that you use on this list, doesn't mean we can't help you. Uh, it just means that we have alternative ways of supporting you um, that we can discuss uh, if we do have like a one-on-one -on -one demo, uh, we can go through that. So if you do have those carriers, just talk to Jake uh, or myself, and we'll be happy to kind of explain those workflows that we have available. And then lastly, here's just a, a, a slide on different e-commerce integrations that we can also support. So uh, what we find in the GP space is a lot of users will have different e-commerce marketplaces or shopping carts that they're using. Um, so if you are using any of these and they're not integrated today, um, we do have different types of integrations that we can support both GP and one of these carts or marketplaces where we can update tracking information, status updates, et cetera. Um, so feel free to speak to Jake. We can give you more information on those as well. Uh, but just wanted to make mention of these um, since we have you today. <clears throat> and now I'm going to turn it over to Alex, and he's going to sort of take it from here on the Pandatrack side. So, Alex. All right. Thanks. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. A little brief history of Panatrack. We started as a developer of barcode inventory, asset tracking, and item tracking solutions here in the Midwest, just outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin in 2005. And since then, we've expanded to be the leading inventory management solution for Dynamics GP users across the world. With implementations on most of the big continents here, Panatrack offers inventory tracking solutions, what we're gonna focus on today specifically being the order fulfillment process with a full native, native integration to Dynamics GP. That means when you're handling your inventory from purchase order receipts to put aways and transfers, inventory adjustments, order fulfillments, even integration with manufacturing and assembly, Panatrack allows you to capture inventory transactions when and where they occur without the need to have two systems trying to talk to each other, without trying to smash two different databases together. Panatrack allows you to capture those transactions on mobile devices. You can see on the screen here, we have a couple of examples of the different style devices Panatrack uses. Everything from tablets to handheld mobile computers with the keypad to smartphone style devices. Utilizing barcode scanning technology, we're going to be capturing and validating inventory transactions and data in real time with the Panatrack application. Of course, we have native support for lot tracking, serial tracking, tracking inventory by bulk, and pretty much anything else you're handling in Dynamics GP as an inventory transaction can be extended onto the Panatrack devices to capture inventory transactions in your main warehouse, in your satellite locations, even out in the field for organizations who may have smaller locations scattered around the country or scattered around the county. By communicating in real time with Dynamics, <clears throat> we're ensuring that everything that happens with your inventory is captured digitally on the handheld scanner and validated against Dynamics. You're no longer writing it down on paper. You're no longer filling out sheets and passing them around until someone has to sit there and key this data into GP. Instead, with the Panatrack application, <clears throat> Everything from your inventory stock counts to inventory adjustments to order fulfillment, which we'll take a look at in a few moments here, are captured and created in Dynamics following all of the standard GP rules that you're used to. And with that, Panatrack gives you this functionality wherever and whenever it's needed. Our key steps to an inventory process, as you can see on the screen here, cover everything from the time that inventory arrives until it leaves. We have other transactions and other modules that allow you to handle manufacturing, assembly, project accounting, integration with key to act even a directed transfer infrastructure for moving your inventory throughout your different facilities with pick and receive power capabilities on your handheld scanners. Of course, on today, we're focusing on that section on the right side of the screen, the out part. Fulfilling those orders for our customers, whether the orders come in through eBay, Amazon, a Walmart site, your online portal yourself, or they're keyed in when somebody calls in and your salesperson enters that data directly into Dynamics. We take those orders and we make them available to fulfill with the Panatrack device. We're no longer hoping that Bob out in the warehouse is grabbing the large shirt when he should be grabbing, uh, or is grabbing the large shirt when he should have been grabbing the medium because he wasn't checking things. Two different sized items, 
two items with just the slightest variation. When you're utilizing Panda Tracker GP, we're going to validate every one of those order picks, the quantity, and if we have lot or serial details, we're going to validate that as well. From the moment that inventory arrives in our warehouse on a PO receipt, we can print inventory labels until we put it into a box and pass that information off to Starship so you can send it out and you can continue to produce that reliable and consistent customer satisfaction that you're so proud to do at your business. It's a brief overview of the Panatrack solution. Thank you. <clears throat> Taking a look at why Panatrack teamed with the Starship team, is of course a key element as to the success of not only Panatrack and Starship, but to you and your customers. With Panatrack or GP, we can optimize your fulfillment paths through the warehouse. I mentioned we're gonna validate those items. We're gonna remove that paper process. We're no longer keying in data. Our barcode scans are making a mistake something like one in every three million times. I'm not sure I could type my first name in three million times without hitting the wrong key at some point. With Panatrack, not only are we adding that efficiency and minimizing our errors, we're automating that flow of inventory data from the moment it arrives until it's packed, until it's shipped out to the customer. All of that with one single source of truth, that being your Dynamics GP database. Thank you. We can go ahead and move forward now, I think. And we're going to get to... Alex, I'm going to pass you over the yeah. um, presentation now. Perfect. I'll go ahead and we're going to take a look at the Panatrack application in real time. So what we're seeing on the screen now, this is going to be a live view of my handheld scanner. Everything that we're capturing, that we're doing on the screen you're seeing, is happening in real time. This here is a Panatrack device. Of course, up top it shows us Panatracker GP, the industry-leading inventory management app for Dynamics users. And then our username, Alex, that's me. Rather than walking you through all of these different transactions today, just to make sure you can see how Panatrack and Starship can truly streamline that order fulfillment process, we're going to jump into the Panatrack fulfill order transaction here. In our first transaction screen, we can see that we are ready to select the order that is going to be picked and shipped out to our customer. We have the ability to filter orders by site, by batch, even by shipment method. As long as the data is captured in GP, we make that available to the user. If for some reason we have a paper pick list, we could even barcode our order number on that. To give you a quick example of the three different ways Panatrack can enter data, the first one, of course, is going to be a barcode scan. I could scan in my order number by simply pointing at a barcode on a piece of paper and scanning that in. Panatrack is going to validate that that order is real and exists in Dynamics. If we don't have a barcode to scan, we have the ability with Panatrack to use a lookup list. Anybody who's familiar with Dynamics knows that little magnifying glass. We can go ahead and we can bring up a lookup list and we can even do our filtering through this list. So here, if I type in the number four, it's going to narrow us down to only those orders that have a, a four in them. Let's go ahead, let's pick our order 412, and that's what we're gonna ship out to our customer. We hit the pick button, and this is where our user is going out into the warehouse, and we are confirming that they are picking the correct inventory items for our customers. Even if there is similar items, it needs to be the exact item that was put on that order in Dynamics. In a multi-bin environment, we can first tell the system what bin we're going to pull that inventory from. We move on to our scan to validate field. Now this validation field, this is where that real-time data capture comes in handy. If we try to pick the wrong item, the user gets a message. It says, this is not the correct item to pick. We need to make sure the user is picking the exact item that the customer ordered. We scan that item number and Panatrack is going to populate. We're going to confirm that that is the item the user is receiving. From there, we can now go ahead and we can enter in the quantity of inventory items we're picking. Whether we're picking one item as we have on our sales order here or 500 of those, we're gonna capture that data in real time on the Panatrack scanner. And our integration with Starship starts here, the ship ID field. If we're going to pick this inventory right off the shelf and put it in a box that it ships in, we can do that with the ship ID field. We can also do a, a two-step pick and pack process where we capture this information as a second step. 
if we're going to stage our inventory to a table and pack it in the boxes there at the packing station. But I can scan my unique box identification. In this case, I scanned my 1500 barcode and I filled that box up with my classic 128 SD RAM. We move on to our next inventory item. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to first select the inventory location. We're taking that out of, in my case, I'm going to use my lookup list. And we're going to say, we're going to take this out of our bin A1001. Panatrack can, of course, direct users where they need to go in the warehouse to pick inventory items. And then we're going to move on to that scan to validate item field again. This is Panatrack making sure the customers are always getting what it is that they ordered. So here we can go ahead and we can scan in the barcode for our 24X IDE item. Looks like I dropped my barcode on the floor. So give me a second while I pick that up. And we can go ahead and scan that barcode in just like this. Panatrack confirms that is the correct item for our user to be picking. And now we can enter in the quantity that's being pulled off the shelf. If we attempt to overpick that item, Panatrack is going to stop our user. This item goes into our second box here, our 1501. We scan that inventory for that information into the system and Panatrack moves us over to our final screen that the user will face. We have now confirmed the correct items and quantities have been pulled off of the shelf and we have put them in the correct boxes. Now they're gonna go over to our shipping department and Starship is going to take over the rest of the process as that order goes out to the customer. We filled our ship pack tables with that information. We hit the submit button on our Panatrack scanner. And of course, I probably left my sales order open in Dynamics. Panatrack is of course using GP in real time. And now that we've submitted that order, we fixed it and we're good to go. At this point, Starship's gonna take over and they're gonna handle getting that inventory from your warehouse to your customer's site location. Um, again, I'm Jake Tchaikovsky. I'm the senior account executive here at V Technologies who handles the dynamic space. And we're gonna walk through a pretty high level um, parcel workflow with inside of Starship. So what you see here is basically that single screen view of the order that's been keyed in with inside of Starship. So this has been pulled in from GP through the home screen of Starship, and now you're looking at the single screen view of the order you're ready to ship and process. So just across the top there, you see your source, which is basically just kind of a check and balance of which order you're shipping. You have your sender, which is essentially where this item's coming from, and then you see your recipient, and that is just where's it going to. Um, Starship has an address verification that is working on the back end. So up there in the top right, you'll see there's a red X. That's just giving you a heads up saying, hey, this address has not been verified. We do our address verification through the post office. So it just gives you a heads up to say, check this address before you ship and process. But if you're 100% correct, by all means, you're still able to ship and process that and move on with the shipping process. Next, you have your transportation going across the middle there. Transportation is just the ship via that came over from GP. Um, as Simon mentioned earlier, Starship has the ability to key in best case scenarios for your carrier selection. Um, you can choose best way of cheapest carrier, um, quickest delivery, specific carriers for certain customers, if you will. You kind of have the flexibility to kind of make which carrier you want to with coming over from GP inside of Starship ready, readily available for you. Next, you have your shipment details. This is any accessorials you have for your specific orders. So if you're putting any insurance on your orders, um, you have the ability to kind of key that in automatically. We can create rules for you. So you say any order over $500, insurance can be auto-populated on there as well. So you're not having anyone kind of having to make that decision or remember to put insurance on every single order. It gives you that ability to kind of automate that piece there. And then just across the bottom there, you have your packaging, which I'll get into in a second here. You have your line items. That's just any line item information related to those specific items that you're shipping. Um, it just gives the ability to, you know, house all of your specific information based on the SKU level to, for, from values for international shipping or, you know, weights, NMFC codes or classes. However the case may be, Starship can house that for you. And then you see your total charges. That's just, you see the contracted rate there. That is your contracted rate with your UPS account, your FedEx account, or your carrier's accounts. And then you also see your applied charges there. That's just basically any kind of freight rule that you want to have applied to your shipping operation. That's anything from a markup 
um, to a handling fee to free shipping. Starship gives you the ability to customize those for you at any case along the shipping aspect where you can have it per customer or one markup or freight rule across the board. So now we're gonna jump into the packaging here. This is where Starship and Pantrack kind of go hand in hand. So as Alex so greatly packed that shipment ready to go with inside of Pantrack, Starship will pick that up from GP and everything we've packaged here, nice and neat with inside of Starship, ready to be shipped out um, to your customers. So you see each product has been placed into a box. You can expand each of these boxes here by hitting these plus signs on the left there. You see all the weights came over, the dimensions of the boxes came over, and of course, the license plate number came over. So everything works in conjunction and integrated directly with GP. So it comes over nice, neatly and packed, ready to be shipped and processed. Down there at the bottom of the screen, when you have that order processing screen of the single view, you also have the rate shop capabilities. This just gives you the ability to be flexible with your rate shopping between all of your carrier accounts. You're able to pick between different carriers from UPS, FedEx, DHL, or any LTL carriers that you're using. Um, you're able to kind of filter off certain delivery dates or uh, price kind of cheapest rate, best rate, wherever the case may be. This gives you the ability to be flexible with your current shipping operation to save money if needed or to pick or faster transit whenever the case may be. So once you're ready to ship and process that, you hit ship and process through Starship and that will begin printing documentation. Uh, we have the ability to customize certain documentation for you if you're working from here. You see here we've got we can print bill of ladings for you um, for each of your LTL carriers if you're working with those. We can have a uniform one across the board that you use. Um, you see here commercial invoices as well for um, certain international shipping that you do. We can also customize certain documents if needed. I know a lot of customers have specific qualifications they need. We can work with you on what documentation is needed to make sure everything's running smoothly. Um, so there's no hiccups in the back end. And Starship also has some generic kind of out of the box shipping labels and um, packing slips as well that we can also give you kind of up front as well. And now once everything's shipped and processed and ready to go, Starship's also going to write back into GP. Um, so this is kind of just a little quick snippet of what that write back will look like. So we write back into the notes section here with all the good information needed um, just for anyone who's looking up information on that specific order. So you got tracking information, package count, which carrier it was, um, when it was shipped on, estimated delivery time. So all that good information that you need for specific shipment information, Starship will write that back into the notes section. Um, you also see down here at the bottom, we write back into the freight section. That's just the freight amount with the applied charges, but also Starship will write back into some user-defined fields where we place the tracking, tracking link again as well in there, as well as write back the contracted rate into GP as well, so you can do some reconciliation, make sure that you're making money on your orders, and so you have the ability to kind of view both of those in there as well. And then so come standard with Starship is the eNotify tool that we have. So eNotify is basically just the automatic and automated shipping emails that we have through Starship. So this is just kind of an example of an email that goes out to your customer saying, hey, this order is on its way. Please be on the lookout for it. You can see both tracking links are there as well. What items are coming to your customer's way? It just kind of takes that manual piece out of it for you. And usually these emails will go out to your customers right when you ship and process. So we typically like to tell our customers to, you know, make a rule with Inside Starship that sends this email at the end of the day. So it gives your um, carrier enough time to pick up that order. So right when your customer gets this email, of course, they're going to click right on that tracking link because we all do it when we get a tracking link. And when they click on that tracking link, there might not be any information there because the carrier hasn't picked it up yet. So it's just best case to, you know, make a rule to be able to say, hey, I want all of my emails to go out later in the day to make sure that there's the carrier has enough time to pick up that order. You can customize these in any way from different verbiage, logos, um, any coupon codes that you're currently using. You have the ability to customize these to the best of your ability. Thank you all for just that quick little rundown and workflow of Starship.